The owners of the Mexican grocery that brought us the giant Mexican pizza are back with a new restaurant. All of my food came served on rocks. This is Tequila's Mexican Bar and Grill. Tequila's Mexican Bar and Grill is located in Niskayuna in the ShopRite Plaza in the location that was formerly LT's Grill. In addition to a wide menu of Mexican dishes and specialties, they have a fully stocked bar, one side of which is focused on tequila and mezcal. Their drink menu has a long list of mixed drinks including margaritas and daiquiris. We had an opportunity to dine at Tequila's on a busy Friday evening and what we encountered was an interesting experience. The night we visited, one section of the restaurant was closed off for a school function and that kind of limited the seating. It was a rare night where we could drop Noah off elsewhere and go out and enjoy a dinner as a couple. So I had a hot date that night. As we entered, there were no empty tables, so they wanted to seat us at this kind of like banister thing. They kept calling it an island, but I thought it looked more like a banister. A table was more fitting for the occasion, and honestly, we only had to wait about three minutes until the table was ready. And then we were off to the races. Looking around, the restaurant was bright, vibrant, and inviting. For me, all that stuff is cool and all, but I was definitely ready for a drink. We ended up ordering our drinks, snacks, and entrees at exactly the same time. I was definitely wanting an adult beverage that night, so I was focused on the margarita menu. You just gotta go with a marg at a place like this. But I ended up letting my eyes distract me with the fruity and spicy concoctions, and I settled on the mongoneada. From the sound of that, you probably can hear the disappointment in my voice. I'm not disappointed in the drink, I'm disappointed in myself. I know better than to order a fruity margarita, but what I ended up getting was totally an irrational choice. I should have just gone with the classic. This mango neada was not terrible at all though. It was a mango nectar, lime juice, chamoy chili sauce with a little bit of like a tahine rim. The taste of mango and chamoy was really, really strong. The drink was nice and frosty and it wasn't skimping at all on the tequila. That tahine rim to me was a little bit much, honestly, that's probably my biggest issue with the drink. And just the overall vibe of the drink kind of reminded me of like a Bloody Mary, just because you got to drink it straight from the glass and that just brought me to that experience. The mistake here wasn't actually ordering that, it was ordering the size. Most of the margaritas on the menu come either small, medium, or large, and some even come in pitchers. So wanting an over-the-top experience, I ended up with a medium margarita here, and I should have just started with a small and then switched over to a classic margarita after I was finished. You live and you learn. This is definitely an over-analysis. For the purpose of the date and something to sip on, this was just fine. I had a lot of trouble figuring out what to order. The menu was so big. Part of me wanted to go with that Playuda Mexican pizza again, but I figured it'd be similar in nature, if not exactly the same than what they serve at La Mexicana. And I'll explain that whole connection later in the video. When I go to a Mexican restaurant like this, I typically look for like mole poblano or something similar to that, but they understandably didn't have it because the menu was so expansive. They have the typical Mexican fare, enchiladas, tacos, burritos, fajitas, and all of that sounded great and all, but as soon as I saw one particular item, I just couldn't change my mind. And my eyes just zeroed in on it. That was the Oaxacan feast platter. Marinated pork, shrimp, Mexican chorizo, and steak, served with pico de gallo, homemade hot sauce, and black beans, with a choice of corn or flour tortillas. I had a quick little debate with the server as far as who in their right mind would order flour tortillas with that, and she actually said she would. Tough crowd. But I ultimately landed on corn, even though she made me second guess that. I didn't know what I had gotten myself into at that stage, but we had snacks to take care of first. While we sipped on our margaritas, we munched on some table chips and salsa. One thing that we had to try as an appetizer was the mocajete guacamole, and I I love impressive dishes like this that are served in weird vessels. A mocajete is like a Mexican mortar and pestle. Basically all the components of guacamole are dumped into the mocajete and they go to town blending it and seasoning it before it comes out to the table, served in the mocajete. The cool thing about doing it this way is you end up with a nice chunky guacamole that has a little bit of character instead of just like a puree of avocado. You get some nice thick textured bits, areas with tomato and onion heavy, hits with stronger cilantro and lime. It's just a more interesting guacamole experience. Now this particular mocajete guacamole is something that three to four people could easily share as an appetizer, but we easily slaughtered it. And that actually is an interesting point because it reminds me of the main issue that we had with dinner that night. 
our dinner took a very long time to come out. This typically wouldn't be a problem, and even though it was a date, we were on a little bit of a time crunch, just because we still had to pick up our son. So it definitely started to become a point of concern when we actually noticed the time slipping away. And honestly, it had gotten away from us because we were enjoying munching on the snacks and sipping on margaritas. Looking around, we actually noticed that it had been a while since a lot of tables had gotten their food. And then all of a sudden, a burst of plates came out of the kitchen for all the tables. At that point, we knew ours was on the way and were also reassured by our server. And not to speculate too far into what was going on, but it's possible that school function kind of threw off the service. But it was also Friday night, so anything really could have been going on. I mention this because that kind of limited our ability to try dessert. But let me tell you, when my dinner was ready, it was pretty obvious because the entire restaurant was staring at it coming out of the kitchen. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit a like and subscribe if you like food. What I didn't realize when I ordered the Oaxacan feast is that it was gonna come out on a sizzling mocajete. But it did and it was absolutely glorious. The bottom of this flaming hot mocajete was covered with Oaxacan string cheese. And it kind of melted right into that mocajete. Oaxacan cheese is not a very melty cheese, so it didn't actually completely melt and you still got that stringiness out of it. Over that were pork, shrimp, steak, Mexican chorizo, and then a couple surprises, roasted jalapenos and some grilled cactus, nopales. And that was a really pleasant surprise. Once I had an opportunity to dig through the dish, I then realized how ridiculous it was for one single person to order this. Don't worry, it was also lunch the next day. As far as the experience, this is basically a gassed up fajita platter where you kind of choose your own adventure, kind of like an arts and crafts project, the way Nick Swartzen says. On the side, they give you three corn tortillas and I used them to make a couple different combinations. On the first combination, I decided to just stuff a whole roasted jalapeno into the taco, and I humbled myself really quickly when I realized that jalapeno was not joking around. That was a spicy mother. I took the next few bites in a more reasonable way, just trying to make sure I taste everything. The only flaw on this platter was actually the sausage. It was definitely not fully cooked through, but I had a flaming hot mocajete here. I just split it open and moved it over to the hot side of the stone. That night, I mainly focused on the shrimp and the steak, just because those were the things I knew weren't gonna reheat too well. But I did wanna at least take a bite of that pork because it reminded me a lot of what they have at the Mexican grocery, and it was definitely the same thing. I think even the steak was the same steak from that Tlayuda video. The black beans on the side were a little bit unfortunate. They were served on a flat dish and they were swimming in quite a lot of liquid, and they were also a little bit tasteless. Honestly, I didn't even realize when I ordered this that it would be a different black bean experience from the refried beans. Otherwise, I would have just specified to have refried beans. One thing I am a little bitter about though is that now that I read the description and it says that it came with a homemade hot sauce, I didn't get the hot sauce that night. Maybe they were about to bring it out and saw my reaction to that jalapeno and realized I couldn't take it. Don't let the reaction to that jalapeno fool you. We love our hot sauce here on the channel. It actually took quite a while for Cassie's food to come out after mine had come out, which is fine because I was tinkering around with the camera and getting footage for this video, but it was causing a little anxiety because we did have limited time at that stage. Despite my feedback on everything that happened that night, the experience at Tequila's was awesome. We had great food, great drinks, and the vibes are definitely upbeat. When we go back, I wanna find out what's in those jugs that are on the bar. And like I told you, the owners of this place also own the place where I got this giant Mexican pizza.